If you haven't noticed, movies have gotten really weird in the last year or two, and as someone who is just tired of everything Hollywood's been putting out for the last decade or so, I am all for this. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you about more than 10 of the weirdest movies released over the past year. I've ranked them and put the full list in the top pinned comment down below. But because this is a ranked list, we will begin with my least favorite on the list, Crimes of the Future. Now this is from legendary weird movie director David Cronenberg, and what I'll say about Crimes of the Future is that it will definitely appeal to fans of David Cronenberg. However, if you've not really liked his movies over the years or you've not ever really seen any of them, Crimes of the Future is not going to be the one off this list for you. Not only is it one of the weirdest movies on the list, but it's also one of the least fulfilling. I got what was happening by the end, but in my opinion, the juice was not worth the squeeze. This is a rough movie to sit through. It's confusing and really off-putting in almost every single scene. And then the big punch at the end is a little bit of a whimper. However, it's packed with all of the weird body horror stuff you would come to expect from David Cronenberg. And his son, Brandon Cronenberg, has a movie much closer to the number one spot on this list. Another legendary director, George Miller, joins this list of weird movies. He's most famous for creating the Mad Max series. He started with the first and is still directing them today. However, his latest movie, 3,000 Years of Longing, is far and away the strangest thing he's ever made. But I'll also say this is one of the more watchable movies on this list. In 3,000 Years of Longing, Idris Elba plays a genie or a djinn who grants Tilda Swinton's character three wishes. Now that's a very basic setup, but the delivery here is absolutely fantastic. Essentially what you get is like an anthology of these old ancient stories being told by this genie, and it's the story of his life, how he came to be imprisoned in these bottles, and how he eventually escaped over the course of 3,000 years. It is beautifully shot. Every single sequence is absolutely stunning. One of the most beautiful movies on this list. Easily one of the most beautiful movies to have been released last year. But it is kind of a soft movie. It goes into some really tender directions. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's not the type of thing you normally get from Idris Elba, so be a little warned there. But if you want to watch something that's a little bit romantic, yet very, very different from anything you've ever seen, I highly recommend checking this one out. Now, I will say the new James Wan project, Megan, actually not only makes this list, but it makes it into the top 10 because I was pleasantly surprised how good this movie was. It's insane, right? Now, don't get me wrong. It's a PG-13 horror movie about a life-size doll that starts killing people. That's it. If that is the movie you want to see, Megan delivers. Not only does it deliver that, it's also funny and campy and has some really nice touches to it. It's not gonna shatter your concept of what a horror movie could be or anything like that, but it's tongue in cheek and it's one of the more fun James Wan projects I've ever seen. And a lot of that probably comes from the director, Gerard Johnstone, who did Housebound a few years ago, a horror comedy from New Zealand that I highly recommend. I've recommended it on this channel plenty of times. And while I do like that movie more than Megan, again, for the type of movie that Megan is, it would be hard for it to be much better than it was. Now, believe it or not, my number nine pick is actually one of the most talked about movies on this entire list, The Banshees of Inishirin. The other night, two hours, you spent talking to me about the things you found in your little donkey shite that day. Well, it wasn't me little donkey shite, it was me pony shite, which shows how much you were listening. Now, this is the latest movie from writer-director Martin McDonough, and I love his work. I'm partial to Seven Psychopaths. I also really love In Bruges, which also stars Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. And I enjoyed seeing them on screen together. I think they are a fantastic duo that I never would have put together, yet they kind of make movie magic on their own. It's not really one of my favorite Martin McDonough movies. Now, it could be over time. I will admit, I did not really like In Bruges the first time I saw it. It is a movie I absolutely adore now. So Banshees might actually be something that grows on me. I found it to be a little bit slow, very interesting as his movies typically are. And I thought it was actually fairly tight and worked fairly well, but just was not as impressed with it as I had been with some of his other movies, which actually made this movie kind of a letdown for me. And I'm honestly surprised it's gotten as much buzz as it has. 
That said, I do still think this is a solid flick with some really interesting elements. Now on the other side of the table, I'm gonna go with one that I think was actually underrated. One that had incredibly mixed reviews from both critics and audiences, Babylon. I think what we have here in Hollywood is high art. It's party time, Marvel time! Now this is the latest film from director Damien Chazelle, who's most famous for Whiplash and La La Land. He also did First Man with Ryan Gosling. And Babylon is easily his most ambitious movie. This is a huge production. It cost loads of money, not just because of the cast. And I'll be perfectly honest, one of the things I love about this movie is how wild he got with all of the money that they gave him to make a movie. Now obviously they gave him a bunch of money, because he's had some successful movies, yet you come to Babylon, the movie where they're giving him the most money, the most stars, and I am shocked at what he did with this movie. Without any spoilers, there are several moments in this movie that are absolutely vile and disgusting. Some of the grossest things I've seen on film all year. Insanely heavy drug use, especially for a movie that takes place in the 1920s, which is kind of what's cool about it. This is a wild, drug-fueled party movie with some quirky elements that I will admit doesn't necessarily work as a three hour movie. It gets to be a little bit grueling. It ended up being this really wild, over the top movie that feels a little bit like Paul Thomas Anderson and a little bit Coen Brothers and a little bit fresh and new. If that sounds like you, definitely watch Babylon, but go into it with low to no expectations because you're not going to see something that's anything like a movie you've seen before. Now you may have a hard time finding some of these movies to watch, which is why I want to mention today's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN. This is my VPN of choice. It has been for years now. You need a VPN today. It keeps your web browsing safe, secure, and private. Criminals are trying to look at it. The government's trying to look at your browsing. Everyone can have access to it if you don't protect it. So definitely make sure you secure yourself with a VPN. However, I recommend using CyberGhost because they have specialized servers that are going to allow you to watch Netflix and other streaming services in a variety of countries, which vastly expands the library that you have access to. If you don't know, they have completely different things available in different countries, and with CyberGhost, you can jump around in those different countries with the flick of a switch. CyberGhost works on up to seven devices at the exact same time, and you can use it on most of the devices you're already using to stream movies. Right now, my viewers get a huge discount when they go to the link in the description below. You're gonna pay just a little over $2 a month and it will allow you to access way more movies and shows than you could ever possibly hope to watch. That's less than half the cost of one new release movie rental per month. Again, to access way more than you could ever possibly hope to watch. It's a fantastic deal. Again, go check out my link in the description, see if it's a good fit for you, but let's move on with the rest of the movies on this list. Now, my number six pick was actually a fairly popular movie that a lot of people liked, and I'm always excited to see a weird movie like this take off and appeal to a broad audience. Here, I'm talking about The Menu. Any questions? Is this Bergamot I'm getting, Chef? Yes, it is. Now this movie seemingly came out of nowhere. It's from a first time director, first time writers. They have a lot of experience on a lot of hit shows, but first feature film and I thought it was a hit. Not only does it nail exactly what it's trying to do, but you also get just incredible performances from Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Nicholas Holt all elevating this thing. I almost hate to use that word in this review, but they really do, especially Nicholas Holt. I've always liked him, and the other two actors are maybe even superior to him in terms of skill, but this weird character that he portrayed, I thought really helped carry this movie and made it funny at times when it might not have been otherwise. And it's also not stomach turning. It's not too off-putting, which I think is why it appealed to a broad audience. It's certainly weird. However, all the themes work. Things come back around full circle and it doesn't just make one point really well. It makes several and it nails it, which doesn't typically happen with these really weird movies. Something I've already pointed out once or twice on this list. All right, now, Son of David Cronenberg, Brandon Cronenberg makes the list at my number five pick with his latest flick, Infinity Pool. Here, the punishment for any crime committed 
is death. What? What did you say? This stars Alexander Skarsgård and Mia Goth in one of the coolest little creepy horror movies I've seen in quite a while. Now, very much like David Cronenberg, there's weird body horror elements in this movie, but not so much that it should completely put you off. But Infinity Pool has an incredibly creepy mood right from the start. And yes, it's achieved with some weird little camera tricks and some music, but as you descend into the madness that is Infinity Pool, this thing just gets better and better. Now, you will have to suspend quite a bit of disbelief in order to make the gimmick of Infinity Pool work, but if you let it do its magic, this one too makes some really interesting points that are not going to hit you as soon as the credits roll. This is one that will linger in the back of your brain for several days, which I'm always a fan of, especially when they're done well like this one. Alexander Skarsgård is fantastic in this movie. He's the main character, he helps carry it, but Mia Goth is one of the greatest horror movie actors of all time, certainly over the last few years with movies like X, Pearl, and now Infinity Pool. Her range is incredible in this movie. She does so many different little things perfectly. I also love the direction. I felt like it didn't go over the top in terms of special effects and things. It really conveyed a lot of the messages and moods and things with just basic camera work, and I loved it for that. It's not one I will catch myself watching and re-watching many times in the future because of that off-putting mood, yet I still really appreciate this movie and I'm also excited to hear that it's developing a cult following. My number four pick is not the last comedy on this list, but it's certainly one of the funniest movies I've seen in a really long time, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Heading in two is incredible. I f***ing told you. Now for starters, I'm a big Nicolas Cage fan. I love his bad stuff, his good stuff, everything in between. I just, I appreciate what he tries to do even when it doesn't work. However, this movie is one of his most successful in years. And I don't just mean commercially, even though it was successful there as well. This is just successful in terms of it does what it's supposed to do. It made me laugh all the way through. I felt like I got some really interesting looks at Nicolas Cage, because here he's not playing himself, really. He's playing the pop culture version of Nicolas Cage, or at least a pop culture version. The version we all kind of come to see him as, it's obviously not the real him. It doesn't even really reflect his real family structure. However, him and Pedro Pascal had such incredible chemistry together. I, I was amazed at how funny they were in all of their scenes together. And that is what sold this movie for me. It's also very self-aware. I mean, you've got a pretty pretentious actor in Nicolas Cage playing a pretentious actor. So it's meta, but he's also not taking himself too seriously, even though it seems like he does do that at times. I just love this thing. It really is a movies lover type of movie. If you've been a fan of Nicolas Cage in any kind of way, shape, or form over the years, even if you just like his big budget action movies, you owe it to yourself to see him cut it up in this movie. All right, now in this list of weird movies, I did need to put one honorable mention, and that is weird. The Al Yankovic story. Oh, Al, you can't smoke in here. <laughs> I totally deserve that. Now this is a Roku original. You can watch it on the Roku channel, which is available wherever you stream movies most likely. It will have some commercials, but if you like silly spoof style comedies, this is a hilarious one. Even if you're not really a fan of Weird Al, seeing Daniel Radcliffe play him is absolutely amazing. I mean, Radcliffe is a fantastic actor, but he's an incredible comedy actor as well. He really does ham it up in this movie, and it goes into some just absolutely insane directions. And I, for one, was amazed at how funny it was. In this current state of the world where everyone's scared to make jokes, movies have really not been funny for quite a while. Weird is an exception, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like weird comedies. If you do too and you passed on weird because you thought it was gonna be just a shit show, I hear you, 
Trust me though, it punches way above its weight. Now, my number three pick, easily the most talked about movie of 2022, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Now, I know some of you will think it's crazy for me to not put this movie at number one, and I'll be honest, the only reason it doesn't hit number one is this is kind of a hard watch. Not only is it long, but it becomes so intense that I had a hard time sitting through it multiple times. However, it is effective. That intensity and that mood and that feeling that it builds up to is real and it does work. And it's one of the reasons this has gotten so much buzz over the past year. It's also easily one of the weirdest movies on this list. It also manages to make all of those weird things work and it's also a top-notch production. And not just because it's great performances, but they're doing such off the wall. Honestly, bad crazy stuff in this movie, but it all looks incredible the way that it was filmed. It really is a fantastic movie. Another one that is a movie lover's movie. If you saw it and had a little trouble wrapping your head around it, trust me, I get it. The movie went there, but I highly recommend checking out Thomas Flight's analysis of the movie because I think it really did a great job of explaining some things that at my age I was maybe a little too oblivious to. I'll put a link to his video down in that top pinned comment as well. I highly recommend checking it out. And then my number two pick I've talked about recently because it is coming to Prime Video in just a few days, Jordan Peele's Nope. <laughs> Now, as it stands, this is my favorite movie from Jordan Peele so far. He's only done three. While I was a big fan of Get Out, I like Nope a lot more, mainly because I think it's more fun and entertaining, yet it still plays with themes the same way Jordan Peele did in Get Out, even though they're very different themes. And what I mean by that is there's lots of little touches throughout his movies that you can easily not notice and still enjoy the movie. But when you notice kind of what he did here and there, it's actually really brilliant. Now, just as a hint, this shouldn't give away any spoilers, but the story of Nope begins and ends with a popping balloon. Again, that doesn't really spoil anything, but the movie's full of brilliant little touches like that and I absolutely love the fact that Jordan Peele is making movies today. And with all of that gushing over the last few I just discussed, what could possibly be number one? What's a weird movie released in the last year that I think is better than all of those? The Triangle of Sadness. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. Now, this did get nominated for a few Academy Awards. It didn't win any, but this one, absolutely surprised me. Now, it will not appeal to everyone. Most of these movies won't. They're all weird, but this one played with role reversals in a way that I've never seen, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Now, I will say the humor in this movie is completely dry. There are no obvious laughs, but if you like dark, twisted, satirical comedies that are really clever, the Triangle of Sadness will split your sides open at times. Even though, again, the jokes are not really obvious until you get to really the second half of the movie. Just like Babylon, there are several disgusting moments in this movie. So much so that my stomach's actually turning just talking about them. But you can easily avert your eyes when they happen. And part of what I love about this is it attacks the rich in a way that a lot of movies have lately. But it also twists things up and really makes you think about multiple different role reversal situations in a variety of ways, and they're all really clever and fantastic. This was easily one of the most surprising things I've seen over the last year, and easily one of those movies I just could not stop thinking about. You can currently catch it on Hulu, here, at least here in the US, but down in that top pinned comment, I'm gonna be telling you where you can currently stream these movies in a variety of countries. That way, if you use CyberGhost, you can easily check some of these out without having to pay to rent them. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special weird episode, and you will see me on the next one.